Hello, and welcome to Astro Printer. Today we're going to do a review of the JG Maker Magic Printer. Welcome back. So, as I said, we're going to do a review of the JG Maker Magic. Um, I have been playing with this printer for some time now, and for a, for a printer that costs less than $200, it's actually quite good. Now, most people would think $200, bucks, how much can you really do, what type of quality will you get with a, with a $200 printer? Well, you'd be pleasantly surprised. Now, let's do a quick look over the specs of this printer. So, the Magic has a 220 by 220 by 250 print area, which is quite large for a sub $200 printer. It has uh, filament runout sensors. It has a full size SD, which I really like. Instead of using those small micro SDs that everyone else is using, it comes with a scan disk full size SD card. It's only 8 gig, but it's still scan disk. It's not a no brand name. Now, the other nice thing is, if you don't have the ability to use an SD card, most of them, your uh, your op, uh, printers come with these small little uh, dinky little adapters to plug your SD, your micro SDs into your USB. This comes with a travel pack. So it comes with a nice size SD adapter. Nice, I put it in the right way around. and to plug into your USB. So, full size USB, which I actually kind of like, because these small micro SDs, they are very common, they're out there a lot, but they're kind of, um, they're easy to lose, they're easy to misplace. This is a nice, full size, robust SD card. So it's easy to handle, easy to insert on the side. And as well as that, when you're dealing with the, and communicating with the printer, most printers today come with a micro SD card. This comes with a USB B card, which is like the, the, the larger size, USB size. So it's not the, the flat one, it's an actually large one that you get often get on regular office or desk chair printers that you have. The it also comes with a flexible build plate. So let me unplug it. This comes with a flexible build plate for easy release of your parts. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of flexible build plates. Um, I personally prefer to print on glass, but a lot of people are fine with it. So, it does have a flexible build plate. Now, it has a filament runout sensor, which is more becoming more and more common. But for a sub $200 printer, it's actually unusual to have a filament runout sensor. It, uh, it does come with a pretty robust all metal frame. So this is a 2040 extrusion and the, the head bar is 2020 extrusion. But the rest is actually a, a folded metal frame, which makes it very robust. The Y axis runs on two rails, which actually gives it more stability rather than having a single rail in the center, which is and being held on by wheels. So it actually runs on linear rails. The x-axis, again, comes partly assembled. There's a fair bit of assembly involved with it because these, these rails and the top rail and this top cap, which is just for uh, cosmetics, uh, come separately packed. And you actually have to assemble all of this. Uh, but either, either way, it's easy enough to put together. The, the instructions do not come with the printer. The instructions are online. So, a lot of people will argue that it's better to have instructions with the printer. And yes, I see both sides of the story. But having online instructions works fine as well, as far as I'm concerned anyway. Um, but some people may prefer to have the instructions come printed on the uh, with the printer. Now, you could argue as well on the other side that it's actually better to have them electronic so you don't have to deal with all of this uh, paper and you don't, have, you don't have to recycle it and it's better for the environment and so on. So... Everyone has their own points of view on that. I, I actually like the online instructions. 
but it's simply it's straightforward enough. It takes a bit of time, maybe 40 minutes or 45 minutes. It might take some people a little bit longer, but it's worth it in the end. Uh, it, the hot bed, the heated bed, can actually be heated up to 210 degrees, which means you can do a lot of material based on that. Um, like PLA is easy. Uh, PTG, again, easy, because that's probably a 70 or 80 degree uh, bed. Um, you could do ABS on this, but you would obviously need an enclosure, because ABS requires an enclosure. Uh, the stepper motors are all good quality. They're all su substantial. It is a Bowden-style printer. Uh, some people do like Bowden-style, some people don't. And the one thing I do like is all the connections going into the hot end are controlled by a single connection rather than having uh, a whole set of different wires going there that have to be wrapped up and managed. So cable management is quite easy through a single connection. Uh, you do have the cabling from here, but actually that's off to the side. Um, I, it can do up to 240 degrees at the nozzle, which is the stock nozzle that comes with it. Obviously, you could always upgrade that if you needed to go harder material, but most people print a PLA, a PETG, uh, some people will do ABS, but again, you need an enclosure. Uh, I would probably, um, my biggest uh, things that I, that I uh, would question on it is uh, two, there's two main, uh, there's the flexible bed, that's a personal preference, I prefer glass, but there's two other areas that I probably would change if it was my, if it was down to my design. The bed adjustment knobs that are actually, let me slide this back here, they're on or here, they're, they're small, and people with large hands would have difficulty getting at them. Um, but besides that, the bed leveling is quite easy. And on the the wheels that control the X and the, the X axis, sliding up and down on the Z, um, there is no concentric nuts. So if you have any wheels that are a little bit loose, you can't adjust them. So ideally, a concentric nut in here, so you can adjust it to tighten that up a little bit. Now, I haven't seen it being a problem, but um, it does not come, it comes with a nut, but it's not concentric. It's actually more for adjustment, for, for attaching. Um, I would change these with concentric nuts if it was on, on both sides here, if I had my option. Um, so let's talk about print quality for a sub $200 printer. Now, it was on sale in in for a couple of weeks in August 2020, which is when I'm doing this, but the sale has just ended. You could actually have got for $170, $169, sorry, forgive me. You could buy it, could have bought it for $169, but has, it has reverted back to its $199 uh, price. The, for, so, for something that's under $200, the print quality is quite good. So let's start off. I like to do a test print with damp filament. It sounds weird, I know, but damp filament, if you can get a half okay print with damp exposed filament, like this filament has never been dried. It's actually a flesh colored, skin colored uh, PLA. I decided to do some test printing with that at first. And I did one or two more afterwards, but again with the damp filament. But um, print quality, first thing I printed, was what came with the on the SD card, which is one of these calibration cubes, and there's ob there is some obvious um, surface defects here, as you can see. That's because the material is not very good. And I didn't do any calibration or anything else, like no e step calibration or anything. No, I just used the default settings that came with the printer, and the print quality is not bad for not the highest quality material. So the damp filament that's been, that's been out for at least six months or more, and it still gave pretty decent print, as you can see here. So, I decided to, since that came out fairly okay, I decided to do a few others. So I started out with doing a, temp, a temperature tower, and I forgot to remove support, so my temp tower printed with support, and I, and I canceled the print. But what I do notice is the supports come off really easy. You see how they move? That support would actually release itself from the print really easy. So if I break these off, that would come out from the, from the part and it, very, very easily. So it actually did pretty well on the layers. 
So next I decided to go and actually fix my temp tower. And I did a full temperature tower. Uh, I like this temperature tower because it gives the, the stringing option in the center, which is two towers. And then you have two angles. You have a, a 35 degree angle and a 45 degree angle. You also have your bridging and some curvature and overhang in the back as well. So I like this temperature tower. And it's large. It's not one of these small little rinky dink temperature towers that you don't know what the quality is like. Um, and if it's so small, you can't really see the details. So I like the size temperature tower. And it came out very well. Um, it, I would say with this material, it's still being damp, I remind you. The quality was good. The text is easy to see. I would say 205 degree uh, was probably the better of all the temperatures with the least stringing, with damp filament, uh, the best br bridging, and the best overall surface finish. So it did pretty well uh, for such a small printer. And, sorry, it did pretty well for such a uh, low cost printer, $199. So I decided to give it a bit more of a test, and everyone does the benchy. So I took out the benchy, um, ran the benchy through, and I didn't take the standard benchy. I took the um, the, th the benchy with the throne as a seat, and it came out okay. Again, with surf some surface um, inconsistencies, but that's down to the filament. Um, as I said, this is a test with bad filament, but the text is readable in the underneath, and somewhat readable on the back, but it's still, it's not because of the printer, it's because of my material. So then I decided to get good quality material and run a test. So this is all with down filament. So I got some, um, some PETG. I decided to test with PETG. And I made this little bracket with PETG. And this is IC3D PETG, which I really like. Um, I use a lot of IC3D materials. Um, the, there is, first of all, they're a local company, and they did not, this is not a paid advertising, advertisement for IC3D. IC3D I like because I'm in Michigan, and they're local. They're in Ohio. So they're fairly local to me, and so getting materials from them is easy. And they do really good quality, um, uh, filaments. Both PLA, PETG, and so on. Uh, so this came out really nice. This did, this I did do some, it is properly dried PETG. I did some calibration with it. Um, and I came out with some really nice quality prints. Pretty much stringless for PETG from a $200 printer. So I was really happy with this. So I decided to give it another test. Now, I think any printer that can do a really good job in vase mode or uh, spiralized uh, outer contour uh, mode, depending on which slice you're using, is a good sign of a printer. So I decided to, to do a really good vase mode test. And I printed this, the obligatory vase. Now, with clear IC3D PETG, that is a nice quality print. And all it was is doing running a temperature tower for PETG and do some retraction testing, which everyone should do anyway in all the prints. But the outcome is a really nice quality. PETG, see no cracking. This is PETG. PLA would actually crack if you do this. And it came out really good. And it's almost transparent. And it is waterproof. I actually tested it. So this worked out really, really nice. Uh, and I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, for a $200 printer to get such quality. And it feels actually really nice and really good quality. So I decided to give one more test, and I went back to PLA. And my next PLA test was a functional print. Now, some of you may or may not know, and I'm into astronomy, hence the name, Astro Printer. And I decided to, I wanted to print a part to hold a a laser pointer on a printer. So it has got a, it's got a, a wedge for mounting it on the, on the printer. And it's got all of these adjustments to, that actually screw into place. And these are all 3D printed with PLA. I decided to do this with PLA. And they all function. 
and when you have your laser pointer mounted in there and it's on your on your telescope, you have a button, a manual button to push on your laser pointer, because we use them in the astronomy green lasers for pointing out stuff in the night sky. So this comes with a little adapter that you, when you put, insert your laser pointer, actually, let me get my laser pointer. You insert your laser pointer, you can screw down the screw on the power button and activate. Or laser. Let me see if it's activated. Activate your, your green laser. I won't shine it in the camera. And so this would activate the button, and this would actually hold your laser pointer. And you can use it to hold anything else as well, that it was actually mounted like a finder scope or whatever on a telescope. But, as a functional part, it works, and it works perfect. And this is just PLA. Now, I could do it out of PETG, and um, I probably would as a usable, even though white PLA would actually hold up fairly well in warm weather with the sun shining on it because it reflects more light than it absorbs. Um, PETG would probably be a far more substantial uh, part to print for, for um, a, a telescope especially if it's going to be exposed outside during the sun, during the day, while you're setting up before the sun sets at night time. So as a practical uh, use of, uh, for a practical use of the printer, I, I printed this, and it came out really nice. Now, I have to admit one thing. I did move off the flexible bed, and I went to a, gla to a mirror bed just for, just for some of the prints, because my personal preference is printing on glass. People will, um, what I did print on the flexible bed, printed fine. The part is stuck to it. Um, but I have a personal preference towards printing on glass, so I did change it to print on glass. And all it required was a quick re-level of the bed. But all in all, for a printer that costs $199, shipped within the U.S., so if you order it and you're in the U.S. or in Europe or wherever, they have local warehouses, so they ship locally. So you'll have within five days. Um, I believe they're also on Amazon. I haven't actually checked, but I believe it's also on Amazon. And so on Amazon, if you're a Prime member, you can probably get it within two days if it's already in stock. But if not, direct from JG Maker, you can actually get it within five days within the U.S. or and probably the same amount of time within Europe and most of Asia, because since they are based out of China, like most of these companies are. But all in all, it's a nice printer. For you can't go wrong for two hundred dollars. Um, this one has a destination. Uh, now that I have um, I've done my review on it, it will be shipped off to a local school who would actually make use of it for um, robotics classes and so on, or whatever use they have of it. Um, I try and uh, donate uh, printers that uh, that I have done review on that I don't need anymore or that I don't use because um, I'm not going to keep this. So it was it was given to me to do a review. It will be donated onto a school. Um, but all in all, I'm pleasantly surprised. It works well. Um, so as I said, it has a filament runout sensor. It has um, resume and, and power failure. It has a, the print area, as I said, just double check. It is uh, 220 by 220 by 250, which is a fairly sizable printer. And I don't think you can go wrong with it. It, do, it might take a little bit of set, set up time than, than some of the others. Like I know some of the other printers that come um, almost all fully assembled that you can assemble in 15 minutes. Yeah, there are some out there like that, but all in all, it's a pretty strong, substantial, and it's not that heavy. It's a light printer. It's easy to move. So if you want something that's mobile, something that can be used in a school, something can be used for a quick setup, if you only need a print part that fits this build area, and you have, you would, and since the boarding tube is kind of short, you could probably do TPUs on it. I haven't tried any TPU on this yet, um, but I'm sure you can because it's a short boarding tube. Longer boarding tubes obviously become a problem with TPU, those are flexible filaments. But all in all, it's a good little printer. I don't, I haven't seen any issues with it besides the one or two things I already pointed out, which was just the, the leveling knobs, which is a personal annoyance because of my hand size, and the uh, the lack of considering nuts here on the, um, on the, uh, the x-axis gantry so you can actually tighten up these wheels a little bit if you needed to but I haven't had to yet but all in all I think it's a good quality printer and it's 
I think it's more than worth its two hundred dollars. So, uh, if you uh, like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button below, and uh, I try to bring you new good content um, each time. So click and subscribe, and also if you're interested in buying any of the materials, I do have some affiliate links below. Click on the affiliate links. Uh, the affiliate links bring a little bit of income towards me to help me maintain and keep this channel running, and also. You can also subscribe to my Patreon page, which is the, the link is also below in the description. And I hope you enjoy this and keep printing.